back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Haley. My channel name is Trey Shake Mama, and I am a single mom to this little toddler. So this is the first video of my series called Moms Are People Too. I wanted to create this series so that you guys would have a one-stop shop, a place to come to get mommy inspiration and motivation and just feel like a human being. If you're feeling like you are in a rut and you need a little pick-me-up motivation, how, how do I do it? I'm a new single mom or I'm a new stay-at-home mom or whatever it may be. Maybe you work 80 hours a week outside of the home. I don't know. If you just need some mommy motivation and inspiration. Briefly touched on this in my last day in the life of a mom vlog. I do all kinds of vlogs and like, you know, those types of videos where I just compile my life, but I wanted to do specific dedicated mommy content for the single moms, for the stay at home moms, whatever you may have it, just to inspire and motivate us because being a mom, we usually neglect ourselves, at least I did for the longest time. Neglected myself, I still do. Don't shower daily, don't get dressed, don't do my hair, don't do my makeup. I just don't do anything because here I am just raising this child and making sure that she is content and fed and happy and clean and played with and learning and all of the things that we do as mothers every single day. I think it's it's so easy for us to, to lose ourselves in the mix and it's so completely possible to take care of yourself and pamper yourself as well as be an amazing hands-on mom. And I don't know, that's my little ramble. You can expect a new video on this at Moms Are People 2 series every Wednesday on my channel. If you like this series, give it a thumbs up if you think it's a good idea. If you have ideas for this series, definitely leave them in the comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, what do you need motivation? What do you need inspiration surrounding? It can be anything at all uh, i will make a video every single wednesday so go ahead and make sure you are subscribed and click your notification bell to know when i upload so i will be doing monday wednesday and possibly friday maybe thursday maybe a sunday i don't know just make sure your notifications are, are turned on so today's video is going to be my 10 tips my 10 top tips on how to just be okay and survive as a stay-at-home mom, single mom, whatever you may have it be. So tip number one is to get up before your child. Every tip, take this with a grain of salt. If your child wakes up at 3 a.m. for the entire day, maybe this tip isn't for you. You can skip and do the other nine. But you know what I mean? Yes, I've made it my mission and my goal for 2019 to do this. So I like to wake up at least a half hour before Sydney. Sydney typically wakes up around 8 a.m. So that gives me, I, I set my alarm for 7.15 and I'm typical snooze girl, but I'm trying not to, but anyway. So I like to give myself at least a half hour. I go downstairs, brush my teeth, splash some water on my face, make a coffee. And if I straighten my hair and I'm able to do a little bit of makeup or a little bit of editing on YouTube or a little bit of maybe just sit there and put the Today Show on, anything. But to have that alone me time in the morning, to me, it just motivates me. I greet her with a smile on my face versus me saying, oh, I worried Sydney, just like 15 more minutes, good morning, I have to pee and I haven't, I need some coffee or I need whatever, you know what I mean? Waking up before Sydney and waking up before your child is just, in my opinion, one of the best things you can do for yourself. It gives you a little bit of like, wake up a little bit before you have to, you know, do anything and be a mom, so. Tip number two is to create a routine and a schedule. In my opinion, routines create structure for you and your child or children, whether it be like, okay, they typically wake up at this time, then we do breakfast or milk, bottle, breastfeed, whatever it may be, whatever stage that you are at. Have a set like naps, nap time schedule routine when you are at home. Typically, I like to stick to a set routine. We wake up, we do milk, then we do breakfast, then we play and learn. I like to do learning time in the morning and do like a couple of, you know, quick mini lessons, but really it's not lessons, we're just playing in the morning. And then her nap time now is around 12, and then we have lunch around one or two lately, depending on whenever she naps. That's all over the place. And then we play and do dinner at five, bedtime at seven, 7.30 with a bath in between. Like, you know what I mean? Create whatever scheduling routine works for your child. Do that and then you can kind of plan your day around it. 
I like to be a very loose with that because if I want to go out for the day, you know, Sydney's old enough to where she could adapt to any sort of routine, but if she's thrown off for a few days in a row, I get stressed, she gets stressed, she doesn't sleep as well. It's a whole thing, but you kind of know how to plan and structure your day and what you can fit in and what you can do if you have a loose routine in mind. So just, you know, create some sort of routine and you kind of know what you have to look forward to through the day. And it helps the little ones stay on task and sleep well, in my opinion. Tips. Tip number three is going to be get ready for the day. Okay, so I'm gonna take my own advice here because I don't always get ready for the day, but when I do, I feel so energized and motivated and happy. I don't know, it's just something about feeling good about yourself and like feeling like you look good and put together and are presentable. It makes me want to do things, whether it means like get out of the house, go hang out with friends, uh, film a video, it makes me productive. If I have a face of makeup on or I've done my hair or I've actually put on an outfit, for the day, it makes me feel super motivated and just energized. Do your hair, shower, do your makeup, pick one thing, get dressed before noon. Like just pick one thing, whatever that means to you, get ready. And I feel like I'm just better for Sydney if I get ready, if that makes sense. Like I am motivated, I'm like, okay, I'm finally put together. Now I can focus on you or I can focus on whatever task at hand, you know? Tip number four is to get out of the house. If you are a stay at home mom, you know how important this is. Honestly, you guys, this morning, I was so unmotivated. I knew I had to film a couple of videos today. I was feeling sluggish from the last couple of days of not really doing a whole lot. Um, so what did I do? I went to the bank and I got Dunkin' Donuts. That was the only thing I did, but I, I had to get out of the house because I was just feeling like I was boxed in and I was unmotivated, but just leaving the house, getting some fresh air, change of scenery, throwing Sydney in the car. We didn't even get out of the car. We went through the drive-through and the drive-through and then home, but it gave me a little boost of energy and motivation. And I got myself a coffee as well. Like I just felt like I did something, even though I didn't, I pretty much have been in the house all day, but I don't feel like I was because I got out. So I like to get out of the house at least two to three times a week, meaning like I'll go shopping, I'll go grocery shopping, I will run to Target or you know whatever, and then I have, we have play dates at least once a week and newly found play places. So I'd say try to get out of the house, go for a fresh air walk if you if it's the climate and weather for that. Try to go for a nice fresh walk. Uh, let your child play in the snow or do what have you. Just get out of the house two to three days a week. Just try to get out of the house at least two to three days a week to do something besides staring at the wall that is your house and it will make you feel so much more refreshed and motivated and to me in my opinion the days go by so fast when I get out of the house they just do and it's like yes it's nighttime routine and I can get some relaxation and sleep like you know what I mean I don't mean all of these tips to sound like being a mom is exhausting and it's like awful that's not what I mean but you know what I mean like yeah tip number five is to get a hobby Whatever that means to you, just get a hobby, something that you can do for you. For me, it's not a hobby, it's my job and it's my passion and it started out as a hobby, but YouTube is my thing. I have my own thing, you know? It's not, I'm not just solely a mom and I have nothing that I do for me. Like I have my own thing and for me it is YouTube and it is makeup, it is YouTube. Uh, for other people it can mean blogging, it can mean cooking, baking, uh, crafting, creating, uh, like quilting, making things, art, whatever it may have you working out could be a hobby of yours. Um, just, just find something that you're passionate about and do it. Make sure you are doing something for you because if you're not, you will lose yourself and get lost and not feel great about yourself. So I suggest 100% try to find a hobby or a passion of yours and go with it do something, journal, do something for yourself every single day. Tip number six is to do a nighttime pamper routine. You don't have to do this every single night, but I think it's very important. Like sometimes I'll take a nice lush bubble bath, I'll pour myself a glass of wine, I'll do a face mask and I will find a nice movie, whatever movie I want on Lifetime, Netflix, 
whatever it may have you and I will just relax and feel so good about myself. A nighttime pamper routine is like one of the best things you can do because your baby is in bed and happy and safe and you know you're good. So nighttime pamper routine, I will be filming that, don't you worry. Number tip number seven is a little bit a little bit like different. I would suggest independent playtime for your child. Somehow get your child to play independently. Make sure that you're not constantly playing with them. If they get used to you spending time on yourself, then they will get used to independently playing. Sydney for the longest time was very, very clingy, but she got used to the fact that mommy has to do her hair and I'm not neglecting you. I'm going to play with you, but you also need to learn how to play with your, you know, by yourself type of a thing. So try your hardest to not constantly be playing with your child. Like as I, I, I know that sounds like you're neglecting your child, but you're not. It's very important for kids to learn how to play by themselves and have independent play. So Tip number eight is going to be to meal plan. And that whether that mean like you just plan it in your head the night before, where are we gonna have for dinner? Let me thaw some chicken. Let me meal prep. Let me just throw something in the crock pot in the morning because that's what we're gonna have for dinner. Um, meal planning, in my opinion, can be just very loosely, just kind of think about what is going to be for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, make some, you know, oats in the, in the night before so you know what's for breakfast in the morning. That way you're not scrounging around and looking in your fridge and saying, what's for dinner? I only have frozen beef. I don't, I'm not going to say you're never going to be at a bind. We all have the fast food moments where we're starving and we're out, we have nothing. That's fine. That way you're not always stuck in a bind and stressed out about where your next meal is going to be and you kind of have a loose plan going forward you can totally meal prep and like actually meal prep and get your food situated beforehand but i am not that person so i cannot advise you to do that yet tip number nine is to put yourself out there this one was a big one for me as a single mom i give myself anxiety about doing new things all the time you know if you watch my channel to put yourself out there and do things that usually would make you uncomfortable is extremely rewarding. Going apple picking by yourself, bringing your child to the fair, going out to eat with your child just by yourself. Like those little things for some people is no big deal, but for people like me, once we do them and accomplish them, I feel so proud. I'm not like letting my child suffer because I'm, or miss out because I am a single mom, but doing those things just make me feel so accomplished and proud and I'm happy that I did them. I'm not missing out and she's not missing out um, on things that, you know, typical families do together if you're a single mom or even if you're a stay at home mom and you just wanna go out to lunch for the afternoon or something. Putting yourself out there and doing things that make you un uncomfortable and stepping outside your comfort zone is really going to better who you are and just make you just a more confident human being and a confident mom and woman and confidence is a major thing when it comes to being a mom and being okay with yourself and who you are on the inside it just boosts you up and makes you feel just just so proud and confident and tip number 10 is probably going to be the hardest and it is change your mindset changing my mindset is probably the number one thing that has helped me be okay as a single stay at home work from home mom um and what i mean by that is try not to dwell on the negative if something negative happens try to switch your mindset whether that means just take a break walk out of the room go outside go for a walk change of scenery pray about it, whatever it may be, try to change your mindset from negative to positive. Change it from looking into everything in a negative way to thinking positive. Whether it be, I'm grateful that we are breathing oxygen today, I am grateful that I get all this time with my child every single day. Try your hardest to start knowing that the universe is going to provide for you everything that you need. If you are down in the dumps because you are struggling financially, if you are down in the dumps because you are newly single, whatever it may be, just know that it's not always going to be this way. And if you start thinking positive and knowing that positive things are going to come to you, then they will come to you. So change your mindset from negative to positive. Fake it till you make it. That is my biggest, like, it's not a tangible tip. <laughs> I love you.
It's not a tangible tip. That's why it's like the hardest one to grasp and get. And I will make future videos, you know, going in depth about how I changed my mindset because I 1000% have changed my mindset and it has made me a much happier person. So anyway, I will make another video on that, but that one's the hardest tip anyway. So those are my top 10 tips for making being a single or stay at home mom a more enjoyable, doable, happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Again, look forward to next Wednesday's video. I will have lots of different types of videos, mommy routines. Tell me what you would like to see next in the comments down below. And I hope that you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Never up, never down, never Like a theme in a song, clever Feeling